I'm Eddie Conway, host of Rattling the Bars. Welcome to this episode. We are talking to Rachel Wolfenstein, Momia Abu Jamal's former lawyer, about a new development in his case. DA Larry Kressner is challenging his right to appeal. Uh, thank you, Rachel, for joining me. Thank you for having me, Eddie. Uh -huh. Well, what do you think about the fact that DA Larry Kressner's office found six boxes of evidence a couple weeks ago on Momia's case, and now he's challenging Momia's right to appeal? Well, I think the entire situation is outrageous, um, meaning that these boxes were hidden. Uh, Krasner describes it as they found these boxes in a room that was largely inaccessible in a remote area in the DA's office. boxes that are hidden have to be evidence in there that would explode the uh, frame up of Mumia, evidence of uh, prosecutorial and police misconduct, uh, coercion of witnesses, uh, and all sorts of things that were done that led to Mumia's uh, conviction for a crime he did not commit. So what the, what the DA did is after two weeks of holding these boxes, he allowed Mumia's uh, attorneys of record access. Now, that means that we have no reason to have any faith that there was no further tampering with these boxes. Um, and I made the point, and we've made the point uh, in all our public statements in Philadelphia, that this is evidence of the cover-up of the frame-up. And means absolutely that the level of corruption is so great and now so confirmed by this uh, secreting of these boxes for all these years that we need to demand and we are demanding that the charges be dismissed against Momia. Is this challenge to stop the appeal or do you think it's a stall tactic to allow them more time to figure out how to proceed? I think it's to stop the appeal. Um, Krasner has taken the same position from beginning to end on this case, which was to pose Mumia's attempt to get new appeal rights. And uh, he opposed it all through the entirety of the time that he's been on the case since January of 2018. Um, and so this is really just a continuation of his policy and it's sort of remarkable that he's done that. Not remarkable, because he's made it clear that's where he stands, uh, you know, uh, hand in glove with the Fraternal Order of Police and the former uh, justice, uh, Ronald Castile, whose bias in Mumia's uh, appeals and the way that he supported and fought for Mumia to be his conviction to be upheld. Um, he, he's just going along the same uh, trail there. It's, it's been my understanding, and I'm not there on the ground, but that he has challenged the police in a lot of different ways uh, in relationship to Black Lives Matter, even in the relationship to uh, death penalty cases, uh, he had opposed uh, people that even had, like, murder cases against police to not get the death penalty. Why is he acting this way toward Momia in Momia's I case? Think, I think you, you hit on a very important question, that uh, for Krasner to make his basic reforms, the uh, actually fairly modest reforms, I, I'm not doubting that he hasn't done certain things in terms of changing cash bail, of how he's handled a number of cases involving, uh, you know, police shootings of, of innocent people, um, et cetera. But um, Mumia's case is really the 
most notable case that challenges in every possible way the workings of the American judicial system, um, because he was arrested and framed for a murder he did not commit, that the police and the Fraternal Order of Police know he did not commit. And he was also targeted for being a politically opponent of the policies of this government. And he was outspoken from the time he was 15 years old, put on the FBI's target list for extermination. And we can go on and on over his advocacy, including his defense of the MOVE organization. Mm -hmm. So Mumia's case is a lightning rod. And it has there the commitment of the Fraternal Order of Police to seeing Mumia first executed and now to die in prison is actually part and parcel of the significance of Mumia's case and what it would mean for Mumia's freedom, because his freedom on the grounds that there not only was fundamental violations of due process in his conviction, you know, exclusion of African Americans from the jury being tried by a judge who said to another judge, I'm going to help them fry the the N-word, um, it exposes from top to bottom the uh, corruption and racial and class bias in the judicial system, and somebody who has been a fighter from the time he was a teenager. So I think that um, Mumia's case, in a way, unlike other cases, even cases like yourself and other former Panther members um, and the MOVE organization and so many other people who are targeted for their political uh, views and their actions uh, by this government. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, me, Mumia's me, case, is, it goes to the heart of everything, and he's been a spokesman mm -hmm. for all that. Let, let me ask you this, because Kresner is uh, challenging the appeal. On what grounds can he challenge it? If the judge already ruled it was a conflict of interest, what was Kresner's position about why he challenged that? Well, he originally challenged everything because he said that there was no evidence that Ronald Castile was personally involved in Mumia's case. So he made this sort of argument which flies in the face of all reality of what was going on in Philadelphia and Castile's role as district attorney to uphold Mumia's conviction. He also uh, carried out the same sort of technical slicing and dicing of words to say that the fact that that Castile had said that uh, he was fighting for uh, sort of immediate executions of people who had been uh, convicted and sentenced to death in opposition to a governor at that time who was opposed to capital um, uh, capital uh, executions, um, was not applicable to Mumia because Mumia his name was not in the same piece of paper that uh, Castile was shown to uh, indicate this to the governor. But the point, the more fundamental point, is right now what the Judge Tucker granted was a new appeal on the, just the most fundamental due process, uh, fundamental presumption of what a judiciary is supposed to be, a tribunal is supposed to be, which is supposed to be impartial, not biased, no conflict of interest, and no appearance of impropriety. And the reason why Krasner has said, and he put out a press release about this yesterday, the reason why he said that they had to appeal, they said they agreed with some things, but it was too broad. It was too broad a decision, both for other defendants as well as for Mumia, which means that he is denying the, uh, the fundamental um, legal principle that you need a judiciary that is does not have the appearance of bias. And in Mumia's case, and what Tucker said, is that what Castile had done is he had run on a law and order platform as a judge, bragged about putting 45 people on death row, and bragged about the fact that the Fraternal Order of Police gave him political support and financial support. So those are the fundamentals, and we have to realize that particularly in states where judges are elected, and certainly prosecutors are elected, that the entire point um, about bias when you're saying that if you're going to have a neutral judicial system, that's the formality, that's the legal due process principle, which is actually not how it works, but that is the principle that's supposed to be due process and apply. Okay. So that would mean that 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 would affect 
that would affect across the board so many judges in this country who are mm -hmm. elected with the support of the Fraternal Order of Police or on a law and order uh, program. Okay, so where, where do we stand now uh, with this challenge to the appeal? What's the next step? What court do we go in front of and what, what's gonna, what can we anticipate happening? Well, there's, there's two things happening, um, or three things happening. In terms of uh, Krasner has appealed saying that you can't give people this much justice. I mean, just to say it a different way. And meanwhile, Mumia's attorneys have filed their notice of appeal to begin the appeal process of all of Mumia's uh, prior uh, denials in the Pennsylvania Supreme Court of all the challenges to his conviction that occurred from 2000, uh, I'm sorry, 1998 through 2012. So these are both going up to the Superior Court, an appellate court, not the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania, but an intermediate court uh, for a decision. And what is quite possible is that the uh, Superior Court will say, hey, we're not going to hear Mumia's appeals, uh, which is what Tucker granted. Uh, we're not going to hear that until we decide whether or not, in fact, it was wrong for Tucker to make this ruling, that that was incorrect because Krasner is fighting it. And so what we're looking at, quite frankly, unless there is the intervention by really mass protest and mobilization across the world, which saved Mumia's life before, twice, uh, when he had, uh, you know, execution warrants against him. But what this is doing is Krasner is basically saying, well, not only is Mumia not going to have simply the right to appeal, you know, we're not talking about a new trial. We're not talking about dismissal at this point. We're talking about simply getting his case heard uh, by a supposedly unbiased judiciary that that could take 10 years. When the federal court, and the reason I say that is when uh, the federal court overturned Mumia's uh, death sentence back in 2001, Mumia stayed in death row and solitary confinement in a cell that he described as living in a toilet um, for 10 years while the prosecutor took all the challenges up to the U.S. Supreme Court twice. And so Krasner has gone on this route. He opposed this simple uh, right of Mumia or should have been accepted right away, that Castile was biased based on everything that we know about the case and everything that he had done. He fought that all the way through this whole past year. Now he's filing uh, notices of appeal. He's going to appeal it. And what he is setting in motion is an appeal process that means it is highly unlikely, I have to say, that Mumi would live to see even the ability to be able to have his appeals heard again, let alone to get the dismissal of the charges that are warranted here. Well, um, you and know, that's what Krasner's doing. That's what he's well, doing, pure and simple. Yeah, well, I see that the head of the NAACP came out uh, yesterday. Uh, right. And and uh, is asking Kressner to withdraw that challenge. Uh, is, is there other public uh, uh, support well, the, being organized to do that? Because yes. uh, it obviously it's going to require more than one voice. Are there other voices oh, up right. there? Well, in the in the past month before Krasner filed his notice of appeal, there was an international uh, outcry. There were letters that came from all over the world, from trade unions all over the world, uh, individuals, there were petitions that were signed, all this to tell Krasner this past month, do not appeal. Okay. And of course, he ignored that. And that will continue and be increased. But meanwhile, the, what the boxes represent in terms of what are potentially explosive evidence of the frame up of Mumia, a c confirmation of what we've said, mm -hmm. is that really the man has to be right now, again, that all of this is evidence that means that what should happen is the DA's office should dismiss these charges. And that's what we need to fight for is Mumia's freedom. Mm -hmm. And that's only going to happen through really mass international protest of every sort from, you know, petitions and letters and phone calls and also mobilization in the streets. And, uh, you know, look at there should be, you know, labor should stop. Part of the land, part of the demands that should be made in this country is to free all political prisoners, as well as changing economics uh, situation, racism, you know, the right to have jobs, the right for medical care, all that. And the fight for Mumia's freedom should be part of that as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, if something new develops on this end, 
Uh, we will get back in touch with you so you can Absolutely. update us. Thank okay. you very much. Thank All you right. very much. Okay. And thank you for joining this episode of Rattling the Bars.